Most of the cat skeleton is actually very similar to the, uh, the human. We focus on a little bit more of the uh, differences between the skull of the human and the skull of the cat. Um, obviously because they're quadrupeds, they're going to be a little bit more flat or horizontal orientation to them. And we're just going to see a couple of changes um, within those. And I know the light is going to be a little bit different uh, and make it a little bit difficult to see some things. I'll shade a little bit, um, but we'll be able to adjust. Uh, I think just fine. We're going to find the nasal bone is going to be right here and it runs all the way up to here on the cat. So it's a little bit longer and more flat um, than on the human. Following that, take a look at where the frontal bone is. Here's basically where the eyebrows would be of the cat and they're going to run all the way up to here and the frontal bone is actually more of a diamond shape. If I take a look this way, it's more of a diamond shape. What makes one of the differences that they've got, and actually a disadvantage for cats, is their eye would be sitting right here, obviously. That's really exposed to uh, damage from above. So one adaptation that's happened is you get a little uh, process that sticks out from the frontal bone to protect and help form that eye orbital a little bit. You're going to get a little extra stuff from the uh, support from the cheekbone itself, but this frontal process is unique to the cat. So if we take a look, we've got nasal, the frontal, the frontal process, we also have the maxilla that goes down and it's going to form the mandible, or uh, the maxilla up here, the mandible is going to be down below. That's really a, about the same as in the human. Now we follow this way, it's going to be the zygomatic. This is going to be right here, is, you can't see the real suture line, but basically here's the bone, here's the process, this is the temporal process of the zygomatic bone, then we come to the temporal bone is actually real small and it sits way down in the cat to here. This is going to be the temporal bone and this is the zygomatic process of the temporal bone as it comes out here. Here you can see the suture quite nicely. Here's where the zygomatic process is going this way. Here's going to be the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. Temporal process of zygomatic, zygomatic process of the temporal. Now as I work my way back I said that the temporal bone is actually quite small. You can always find it because you've got the external auditory meatus and everything fun like that we had in the, in the human skull. Here's the parietal bone. Okay, parietal bone is actually going to form um, to the back. Now here we see um, where the two parietal bones have merged. Right there you can see the suture. Okay, that's a sagittal suture just like on us. Here would be, I guess by de definition, would be our coronal suture. It's not as good because the frontal bone is, is diamond shaped. One thing to point out is that there's actually a crest here on the sagittal suture, so we call that a sagittal crest. Right here is going to be the occipital crest, and that means way underneath, protected by this crest, is going to be the occipital bone. Okay? There are actually a couple other bones. Um, we're not going to worry about those names. Now when we talk, take a look at uh, other structures, it gets pretty simple. Okay, we're going to be taking a look. We see uh, cervical vertebrae. We see thoracic vertebrae. Now one thing you want to notice about those is look at how tall the spinous process of the thoracic vertebrae are. Scapula. Now with the scapula, notice we've got the scapular uh, spine on there. We've got muscles that sit on top, the supraspinatus and infraspinatus, but down below. So that spine helps to form those muscles. Um, and define them. We've got thoracic vertebrae, we've got lumbar vertebrae that go down to the sacrum, and on this, uh, the sacrum is going to be right here. Now we take a look at our pelvic cab, our pelvis. On the cat we're going to find the ilium. Let's see here, this is kind of hard to see. The ilium is right here. The ischium is the part that they would sit on. Okay, that's the lower part. And then down in front is going to be where the pubis is. Okay, and I've got a little piece of tape on there. There we go. That's a test question for later on. So if you're looking at this, you got yourself a little bonus. Um, so here's where the pubis would be. All three of these, the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis, will form what's called the os coxa. Okay, after that we're going to find our tailbones, which are called caudal bones. 
Everything else is actually pretty similar. We still have a humerus. We still have, yes, cats do have a thumb. They don't use it for much, but they do have a thumb. So we're going to have the radius and the ulna. We're going to have our tarsals and metatarsals and everything else. As we work to the back, we're going to still see the femur. We're still going to see a patella. We're actually going to see on the back, we'll see a little bone called a flabella. Okay, we're going to have our tibia, we're going to have the fibula, um, and everything else is actually still the same. So we had some new uh, terms on there uh, in terms of processes. Most of those are going to be with the skull. The new terms for us that you would not find in the human is going to be the sagittal crest. Okay, just look for the sagittal suture, you'll find that. Um, the frontal process that protects the, the type of the eye, here's the sagittal crest again. And a really big and pronounced occipital crest down below is going to be the occipital bone.